Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon, the podcast where we talk about anything and everything Pokemon. And listeners, I am out of town for the weekend, and uh, I just wanted to make this kind of a short and sweet episode, because if I held it off any longer, then it would be like Monday night, and I'd be like, well, then what's the point of releasing an episode if I'm just going to do another one on Friday? Like, I, I didn't want to make it like one super long episode the next week if I had skipped this over, so I decided to just come in now and just kind of talk about three two three major things that have happened in the uh pokemon news this last week lots uh not not a lot of updates per se but still some things to definitely make mention of i mean pokemon masters right now is just still going through the two-year anniversary their their anniversary sync pairs are available the reshiram the shiny rayquaza and the lunala which are all very good sync pairs um I've already spent a decent amount of money in them so far, and I've only gotten Lily. Uh, but I think they're just—I think—I think they're worth it. I, I definitely think these sync pairs are good overall, uh, not just to battle with, but just you know aesthetic uh, reasons too. Like they just—they look really well designed. But other than that, Pokemon Go is just doing uh, still their um, mischief, their season of mischief. The Hoopa research is rolled out although i think it's stuck on number two for some reason i keep seeing it around social media i haven't really t- done anything yet with pokemon Ma- uh, pokemon go other than just do the dailies uh but so i don't know what's going on with step two but other ways uh there's still lots of other things to take care of and they announced that the uh psychic event is actually featuring malamar which makes sense right psychic there was dark and revolve around or overturn your your day or something like that. Uh, Malamar is the overturned Pokemon, I believe so. Uh, so it made it had made sense for Inke and Malamar to be the featured Pokemon of that event, which is pretty cool. I'm wondering how they're going to do the evolution though, because right back in the in the DS days, you had to like turn your DS upside down, and then the same thing you had to do for Switch when you had to catch the Inke in Sword and Shield. You had to you hold your Nintendo Switch upside down in order to evolve it. I don't know if it's going to be the same concept here where you turn your phone upside down. Uh, it would be a fun little gimmick, but we'll see when that comes. Uh, I think sometime next week, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, like I said, other than that, there's nothing, uh, I guess, minor updates are just minor updates. There's there's three, there's two major things. Let's just keep it short. Two major things have happened in the Pokemon world. The first one, which of course I definitely want to talk about is in Pokemon Unite, we had finally gotten Blastoise. And let me tell you, I don't know if my bias is this heavy with Blastoise, but it is by far my favorite, and I almost want to say most powerful Unite pair, uh, Unite Pokemon in the entire game. Like, it is incredible. The animation, the attacks... Uh, just the overall feeling of being Blastoise, like they, I, I feel like they nailed this character uh, to the T in in everything and in, in all aspects of of what makes this Pokemon a, a lovable starter Pokemon. And it's just, oh man, it's just I love it every time I play with Blastoise. I get upset when I don't get to pick it right away because someone beats me to it sometimes. Um, but the attacks are. Uh, pretty good uh, and a lot of fun actually my first time uh, playing blast toys you know I was just kind of going for some unique attacks that I wasn't familiar with and so I went with rapid spin and water spout and as it so happens rapid spin kind of gives you a buff I think in defense and also an attack but uh, you get to attack while <laughs> doing rapid spin and you also get to do water spout while also doing uh, rapid spin so it's it's very it's very much like the anime right he, he uh, squirtle or turtle blasters they spin around the shell and they shoot water <laughs> out of the shell too like and blasters will shoot out of his cannons like it, it just makes sense for that Pokemon to do it and it's just so much fun just to kind of spin around your enemies and you know kind of create a lot of damage and spread it all around like it's it's really really good uh the other combo that seems to be working because that's that seems like to be the first move set not necessarily the first priority move set but a move set that can work together very well the second would be the his other two moves would be surf and uh hydro pump which is very good for crowd control because if you can use surf and if you if you get it right you 
attack the enemies uh, and push them into a direction, and it'll kind of stun them for a second. But you leap off the surf, and that gives you an opportunity to line up a hydro pump. And then with hydro pump, you can then push the enemies back and not even just deal damage, but just push them away so far that it gives you an opportunity to escape if you have to. Otherwise, it gives you like a brief second to just kind of advance further and kind of finish them off with like, you know, a regular attack or whatever. Um, it's a very powerful combo. And I don't, I, I got to give credit to obviously YouTubers and, uh, you know, other uh, social media uh, influencers that follow Unite and, and like to help out people because I wouldn't know what uh, items to pick. And so what I had picked for this was Buddy Barrier, Focus Ban and i think it's special glasses or something like that something that increases special attack because if uh blastoise reaches like half hp then his special attack increases so it makes sense to buff that up even more so that way as you get chipped away at then you have powerful attacks to to kind of make a comeback for now his unite move which was i i was thinking i thought that was going to be hydro pump it actually ends up being uh hydro typhoon i think it's called and that is exactly what I thought. It was going to be a short radius, uh, powerful attack that, you know, it just spins around, damages everybody and kind of stuns them for a bit. Um, but it does a big amount of damage. So it is definitely worth uh, just kind of pulling it off. There is like a moment where as you prep for the Unite move, that it's it's possible, I guess, for them to, to cancel you because I was canceled out of Unite move a couple times. But I think... Uh, if I if I saw correctly and and um, following the, the the people that you know help out players in unite they they would recommend full heal uh, to go with blast toys so that way you can kind of uh, not have to worry about paralysis or stun or whatever like that so uh, for me that whole combo is working out right now and I do prefer the surf hydro pump combo over the rapid spin water spell even though rapid spin water spell is really really fun so. Uh, I'm just very happy that Blastoise has like this big spotlight on him because I think a lot of people are happy with Blastoise. And I don't see any other reason to get any other Unite Pokemon. So I am set where I am. I am happy with my Blastoise. If I don't get Blastoise, then I usually have Cinderace as my backup um, because I do like using that kind of a, an attacker. So uh, I'm very excited. I'm very happy. Blastoise is in the game. I'm, I've been playing Unite a lot more because of him. And uh, I think everyone should give him a shot, even if he's not your favorite, because he's really, 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 really good. Okay, now, the only other thing really to talk about, and this is kind of a big deal, uh, and something that wasn't uh, expected at all, although Pete, we, we love it when uh, Pokemon does this kind of thing. So, Pokemon has announced a new web-based anime, anime series called Pokemon Evolutions. This is along the same lines of like Twilight, Twilight Weens or Pokemon Generations or Origins or something like that. It's it's the same concept, right? They take uh, your your uh, generations, the, the specific events, those momentous occasions that happen in those games, and then they just make a uh, you know an episode featuring that with a retell a retelling of it of some sort. But the animation to this is so good, like. I, I almost want to say that this is the best that they've done so far, although that might be a too bold of a statement to say, but I am just enamored with the trailer. So I'm playing it right now uh, as I'm as I'm talking to you guys, and the city landscape is just so detailed and so vibrant with life, and they're showing off the, the Galar gym battles, and then you see Leon throwing the Ultra Ball to unleash Charizard, and Char like there's some sort of like weird, realistic approach to this and it's i don't know it's like i guess for the mature audiences but like it still has that that same old pokemon feel you got a story about lily here uh the climbing up uh you know the canyon uh oh, the sky is just gorgeous with the colors xerneas and and the different colors of it on its antlers and the the animation is just wild like i cannot stress that enough like it is just so crazy how well like drawn or uh well modeled this this series is and like they only show i guess like maybe the first couple clips and then they show concept art of future episodes which gets really exciting because we're going to go through uh, a couple of the episode titles and see um, maybe we can figure something out i don't know but uh there was like an image of barry and his empoleon and we had a uh, primal kyogre and primal ground on battle um but uh it's 
the, the evolutions logo looks so good too like they oh man this is this is gonna be crazy like this is gonna be the probably the most exciting thing that has come out of the 25th anniversary uh year for pokemon uh so like i said it's a like we said it's an eight part web series um it starts on september 9th i believe uh yeah which is crazy because that's actually the day before pokemon master journeys premieres on netflix so it starts on september 9th and it will air every few weeks uh and Cerebi here actually has all the specific dates for it so Seems to be on Thursdays, uh, every couple weeks. On September 9th, we get the Champion featuring the Galar region, and I think that's where the majority of the trailer was. Uh, Leon, and you saw Hop, and uh, your main character. Uh, September 23rd, we get the Eclipse, which features the Alola region, and that's where we see Lily uh, climbing up the canyon with the main uh, player of the game. And uh, I think that we saw a couple images of Lunala in there. And if you look at the Evolutions like poster, for it, uh, you, you see uh, Lily is meeting Lunala, so that would be cool to see. I wonder if we'll get to see Soga Leo in it. Uh, let's see, Thursday, October 7th, the Visionary featuring the Kalos region, which is where we saw Xerneas. The Plan on October 21st featuring the Unova region. Uh, not sure which one will correspond to that. Uh, I guess the Getsis, Getsis Zekrom storyline there. Uh, let's see, December 2nd, The Rival, featuring the Sinnoh region. Uh, that would be Barry and Napoleon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, December 9th, The Wish, featuring the Hoenn region. But it, with Hoenn, I see Rayquaza. So I'm curious, though, like, The Wish makes me think Jirachi. Uh, I would assume Jirachi is going to be a, a, a main part of this? Or I guess maybe, like... Like in the background, and the whole story is about the concept of a wish. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, I would be surprised if we don't see Jirachi in there. Then Thursday, December sixteenth, we uh, the episode title is the show featuring the Johto region, and we do see Lugia, but also uh, more interesting is that we see one of the um, uh, the dancers. The is it a geisha girl? I forget exactly what the the title of that role is, but uh, you know she's holding the fan. She's wearing that uh, that dress. And uh, I think this is what going to probably be, be uh, a, a retelling of that. The Like when you confront the, the, there's like three or four of them and they tell the story about Ho'oh and Lugia, I think, or something like that. I, I, I think it's going to be probably about that particular scene. And then the last one is called The Discovery featuring the Kanto region. And we see, I think that is Leaf and Blastoise, which is a little interesting because I thought it would be Blue and Blastoise, but we're seeing Leaf and Blastoise this time around. So I don't know if that's just like a weird, uh, just a kind of twist on the story or if Gary slash Blue is going to be part of this entire episode as well. Um, I am curious how long these episodes are going to be. Like... I know in the past they were typically what like 20 well twilight aliens was like anywhere from like 8 to 15 uh i think generations was 20 to 30 minutes something like that per episode uh i would really hope this at least stays around the 25 minute mark but i definitely would want each episode to be longer to really flesh out a, a good part of the story for each generation and this is this is such an awesome way to celebrate each generation for the 25th anniversary like i i stand by it i think this is the best thing to have come out of uh the pokemon 25th anniversary people love it when they do this stuff i love it when they do this stuff i loved origins i loved twilight uh twilight wings i i love generations that was very cool um I'm trying to think what else oh, there was tw generations twilight wings origins and i feel like there was one more i'm gonna hate myself later for uh obviously forgetting it but i you know people keep claiming that like oh we should just always get uh you know a um uh, a whole series that is based off of this and to a certain extent like i get it i think i was that way too at first when like when we saw origins like oh yeah it'd be really cool if we had like an entire like season or you know uh you know it's just series that's just gonna be this type of animation it's more mature and things like that but i think i as i as i keep watching them and you know we watch the anime in between I think I like the fact that we just get the main series because that's just like our childhood and like that we've always grown up with Ash Ketchum and Pikachu going on this adventure and battling all the, the trials or the gym leaders and going to the Elite Four. I, th I think there's something special and unique about that. But then you get like these 
special occasions, these web series that just like even excites you even more about Pokemon and go like, man, this is this is where I kind of feel like I am. Like, you know, if you take the, the episode with um, Leon, right, and and battling Eternatus, uh, and it seems like you know this web series is going to be a retelling of that. It's it'd be interesting to compare the two, right? Because if you if you do the uh, Pokemon Journeys the series version. That's like it's very kid like, it's very childish. Yeah, it's very like serious at sometimes and you know, you get to see some cool battles, but like, you know, it's still like vibrant in color and stuff like that, as opposed to now this web series version, it's kind of like a darker tone and uh, you know, it's it's more mature and it's just like maybe kinda of like how I would envision it as an adult versus like the uh Pokemon uh Master or Pokemon Journey of the series, which it would be more like just like how kids would picture it, right? And I think that's I think that's the route they're probably going is those two different perspectives. And and I think that's what makes that great. Like these special web series just they they knock it out of the park. I don't think a single one has failed. Like they're sure in, in generations or episodes that people favor more than others, but that just goes down to like what you grew up with, whether it was Gen three, Gen five, whatever. Uh but I I just think when they capitalize on that, when they say, Hey, we're gonna do this short series, they they give it 100%, or at least we expect 100%, and we see the 100%, but we see more than that 100%. And it just makes it so much more meaningful. And it's like one of the greatest gifts that Pokemon could give us. Like, obviously, you can tell I'm really, really excited about it. Um, I, I'm i just so much looking forward to it. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I'm, probably gonna, I'm probably gonna rewatch a couple of these episodes because there's... N- uh, each one is just as exciting and it's just probably going to make me want to replay the games all over again even though I just recently played most of them so it's something to look forward to it's starting September 9th that's just this next week I might hold off then a little bit on recording because uh, that's a Thursday if I'm not mistaken so I might record either that Thursday night or Friday night so I can get my thoughts in about that episode um, but yeah that's pretty much it as far as like the updates and news and stuff. Like I said, I kind of wanted to keep it short, but you know, I'm not going to leave it uh, just at this now because we still have, and I'm still going to do it, the Pokedex trivia. Where I read to you an entry from a Pokedex from any of the games across all eight generations, and you have to figure out which Pokemon it is based on that description. I will give you a couple hints here and there, but I won't go too long, so that way you don't have any chance of Googling the answer. Uh, But uh, I will hopefully give you enough hints to kind of make your choice a little bit more narrowed down. Uh, Some of these Pokedexes, or Pokedex entries, are very, very obvious, and some uh you know are just kind of way out there and you wouldn't think they would relate but anyway here we go let me read to you the pokedex entry for this pokemon the weakest dragon type pokemon it lives in damp shady places so its body doesn't dry out i don't think i really have to give much hints on this one i think part of that pokedex kind of gives it away and i can't even say it's hidden ability Because it's definitely just going to give away the name of this Pokemon. I can say that this Pokemon has been on Ash's team uh, in in its series, in its respective series. Uh, It is a basic form, so there are two additional uh, evolutions to this. Uh, The final stage of its evolution requires a weather condition to occur. Uh, I would say it's an underrated Pokemon, too. I think, you know, it'd be really cool, actually, if this Pokemon ended up in Pokemon Unite. I think a lot of people would definitely love that. And I can definitely see some cool attacks coming out of it. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I can give you that's not going to give away. Um, It's referred to as the soft tissue Pokemon. Uh, I'll just read the the entry one more time, and then we'll we'll wrap it up from there. The weakest dragon-type Pokemon... It lives in damp, shady places, so its body doesn't dry out. All right, you got your answer. Locked it in. Here we go. The answer is none other than number 704, Gumi. Gumi is our Pokemon of this episode. Uh, And it's a very cute-looking Pokemon. A little odd at first. I, I don't remember the first time I've seen Gumi, but I remember going like, what is this thing going to evolve to? 
And I think I didn't really finish playing X and Y, but I remember watching the anime because that's when I got back into the anime. I didn't watch Black and White. I didn't watch um, Diamond and Pearl. Uh, but when X and Y came out and it seemed like there was more serious battles. Actually, what was it? It was that I saw the Japanese version of the Septile and uh, the Mega Septile and Ash Ninja battle. That got me back into the anime. And so I started watching all those episodes again. And lo and behold, I finally saw the final stage of Gumi, which is Gudra. And Gudra is a very cool Pokemon, but we're, we're sticking to Gumi. We'll talk about Gudra whenever that comes up. Uh, but Gumi, it's a cute little Pokemon, kind of like rivals Ditto in a sense, just with the face and everything. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a big fan base for Gumi. Now, as far as the trivia is concerned, there's only one thing here. And so I guess I'll read off the origin from Bulbapedia as well. The only trivia piece that they have here is that Gumi was designed by Saya Suruta. I don't know what much more you would want from that, but I guess then I'll go to the origin. Gumi seems to be based on soft body gastropods such as slugs and nudibranch. Its typing and eventual dragon design and evolution may be a reference to the blue dragon sea slug. It may also be based upon the concept of living slime in popular culture. Gumi also bears some resemblance to the prehistoric Wewaxia? Wait, what? Oh, that's such a weird creature. It's like a porcupine thing. Like an acorn with some spikes on it. That's odd. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, that's our Pokemon of the uh, of the episode. It's pretty cool. I'm a fan of Gumi. I think other people should be. And from that, and like I said, I do have to head out of town for the weekend, so I still got some packing to do. But hopefully you guys will get a chance to play Blast Toys in Pokemon Unite. He's definitely worth it. And also, uh, watch the trailer multiple times for Pokemon Evolutions and just soak in all the good animation from it uh i'm looking forward to it i'm sure you guys are just as excited as well and with that uh with that being said if you want to follow me you can follow me on social media at twitter and instagram at spartan strike 07 or if you just want to write me an email you can email me at spartan strike 07 at gmail.com thank you all very much i appreciate you guys listening into my episodes oh and by the way if any of my episodes ever get marked as explicit um it's i, I don't intend do that i do another podcast which is labeled like as explicit um because uh, you know me and my buddies talk about movies and we kind of just let our our conversation let loose but uh all my pokemon stuff would never ever be explicit i i would very much make sure of that um if for whatever reason it is made explicit i'd put it in the title so it becomes more obvious but uh don't worry about it if, it, if it's just labeled explicit without it being said in the title then just pop right into the episode because uh i i have to stop making that little habit and that is it so thank you guys very much like i said and i can't wait till next week to we can continue talking about everything and anything pokemon mm-hmm.